walking back from the grocery store. The daylight crescent moon was slipping on down towards afternoon, hanging by a thread from an unseen wishing star. Tipping and tumbling, the pale moon had spilled out most of its cream, and now I have nearly forgotten my nighttime dream. Instead, I turned at the near corner rather than proceeding on ahead, and shortly a silent Furby sitting at a yard sale caught my eye, unwinking. The woman standing there with her coffee cup would let it go to a good home, she said. The Furby had no batteries, and there was no guarantee that the well-worn toy would speak, let alone tell me what I wanted so dearly to know. Still I let go of what I had been so wishfully thinking of for now, this moment now, here. And so with my groceries in my one hand, I took that old Furby up with the other empty hand, the hand that had been holding on to thin air. I held the thing in my hand. And then I saw a monkey-matching card game marked at fifty cents. That too I added and a stacking up wood blocks and marble toy that seemed too good to let go for only two bucks more. Though with hardly a second look I passed easily on by a perfectly rusty metal chair, also only presently priced at a mere two dollars. It seemed as if that old chair might as well once have been painted green as blue, but I was done looking for what I no longer really needed any more. But the chair might indeed once have been blue. Who knew? The folks running the yard sale offered to toss in a single postcard into my hands so full of little for nothing. The card that I had perused and put down and then had picked up anyway. That particular postcard of a painting of pretty people partying in a long-gone nightclub so long ago. And just so you know, the painting was called Nightlife. It had been painted well before even I had even eventually ever been born, painted by a painter named Motley. But what did it all matter? And to what point? All these words spilling out of my head. Still I added the card to my negligible burden of stuff and I walked on. And then there appeared somewhat rusted ahead of me, nearly all of a maple tree's red-pointed maple leaves, waiting on the ground for the rake, or the wind, or the coming winter, or my shuffling feet, whichever would come first in order of happening. Hardly questions even worth asking, I suppose I might then well have well said. After all, the branches above my head had just let them go, all of the rusted red maple leaves. The branches had just let them go. So what choice did I ever even have? The sky so high above me held back the night for a morning, the sky, bright October sky, sky blue. And then once again I was daydreaming of you.